Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Grego, and I'm a senior end-user computing specialist solutions architect here at AWS. This is the fourth in a series of videos where I will walk you through a complete step-by-step -step deployment of Citrix DAS on Amazon Workspaces Core. This video will cover the next step in the process, creating a Workspaces Server OS-based image with the Citrix VDA installed. I'll then show you how to import that image into the Citrix DAS console. The final video in this series will then cover the last step of the deployment. If interested, please see my previous three videos covering topics such as creating resource locations, providing Citrix Cloud access to your AWS account, and connecting to your existing Active Directory. In this video, I will start with a quick recap of where we are in the Citrix DAS on Workspace's core deployment flow. We will then review what options you have for operating system types and a high-level overview of the image creation process. Last, I will visually walk you through creating a server OS image and importing it into Citrix Cloud. Now, to quickly recap, Citrix breaks down the deployment of DAVs on Workspace's core into five basic steps. In the first video in the series, I covered the prerequisites and how to create a resource location. This included how to deploy two Citrix Cloud connectors on EC2. In the second video, I explained how permissions are established between your Citrix Cloud account and your AWS account. We covered how Citrix assumes a role within your account, where to download a template of the permissions, and reviewed the various sections within that policy. In the next video, I provided an example of AD Connector and how it works. I then walked through deploying an AD Connector and registering it with the Citrix and Workspaces services. This video covers how to create your first Workspaces image with the Citrix VDA and import it into the Citrix DAS console. Citrix on Workspaces Core supports two different types of operating systems. Bring your own licensed Windows 11 desktops, and a license included Windows Server 2019 and Server 2022. For desktop OS Workspaces, you can deploy single-user desktops that are either pre-assigned or assigned on first use. The image creation process starts with uploading the Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft, and I'll include additional documentation on that process in this video's description. For this video, I'll be walking through the creation of a server OS-based workspace. For these, you can deploy either single or multi-user desktops and published application servers. For single-user desktops, these too can be pre-assigned or assigned on first use. And for multi-user instances, users are placed based on Citrix's load balancing mechanisms. In this video, I will guide you through the basic image creation flow. We start by deploying a workspace from a base bring your own protocol bundle. This machine does not include an AWS provided remote desktop protocol. I'll show you how to access this workspace as an administrator using RDP. You can then install the Citrix VDA and any other software you want included in your image onto that workspace. I'll then create a workspace's image and then import that image into the Citrix DAS console. I'll now hop on over to the AWS console to start the visual walkthrough. Okay, so before you can import an image into the Citrix DAS console, you must deploy a BYOP or bring your own protocol workspace. Install the Citrix VDA and then create a custom image within the Workspaces console. Um, so here we are in the Workspaces console. And what we're going to be doing is provisioning a new workspace. Um, we're going to select a directory here that we, I've created earlier, um, which is used for our Citrix servers. So again, this is for server OS. So we're going to be doing a shared tenancy directory. We're going to be selecting a, a user that I created ahead of time here called AA Demo User. Um, and he's going to be the one that this workspace is deployed to. Under bundle, this is where you're going to select um, the size and the type of that initial workspace. Now, keep in mind that the size that you're giving it here, whether standard, performance, power, et cetera, um, is only used for this image creation machine. It's not what you're going to have to you know, be set to when you deploy this within Citrix DAS. Um, so set this to whatever size that you think you need in order to you know, get into the machine, install your applications, and create an image from it. Um, and then under filter protocol, we're going to be selecting BYOP or bring your own protocol. Um, the difference between this and the other two is that you know, AWS will not be providing a protocol on the machine. We're leaving it um, without one so that you can install um, the Citrix VDA on there um, and use their uh, protocol for brokering. 
Uh, once you selected that, you need to select whether you're going to do server 2019 or server 2022. Um, for running mode, we're going to want to select always on. Again, these are machines that don't have a protocol on them. So there is no uh, power management and things like that in, in play. So you want to make sure that it's always on um, so that you connect to it. The next thing to note is that under encrypt volumes, you want to make sure that neither of these volumes are encrypted. Um, you cannot create a workspaces image from a workspace that is encrypted. Um, so leave those unchecked. Click next to review your settings and then click create. At this point, it's going to start to create a workspace for this user. What I now need to do um, is wait for this machine, which is currently pending, to go into an available state. Um, so I'll stop the video and we'll come back in a few minutes when that's ready and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay, so a few moments have passed and now our workspace here is available and ready for us. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is click on the workspace ID um, and then we're gonna take note of this IP address and we're gonna need this IP address in order to remote into this workspace to install the VDA and the other software. Since this is a BYOP bundle based workspace, there is no other protocol installed on the box other than the default RDP protocol that comes to Windows. Um, so in order to access this workspace, we're going to need a couple of things in place that I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, first, the security group attached to that workspace's network interface and your VPC needs to allow inbound TCP over port 3389. The Windows firewall within that workspace should not block inbound RDP. Now by default, that's how it's configured. Um, but it is possible if you do have a group policy object attached to the OU that the workspace is in that modifies the Windows firewall, um, that that's blocked. So you gotta make sure that that's not the case. Um, next, you're gonna need a user account that is allowed to remote into that desktop and install applications. So in many organizations, this is typically deployed via a local group permission and group policy. Um, you can also accomplish this uh, by configuring the workspaces directory to grant the user that the workspace is deployed to local administrator permissions. Um, and last, you're going to need a route from your local machine or a bastion host or jump box to that workspaces subnet within AWS. Um, in some customers, you could even use your Citrus cloud connectors that you've deployed previously um, as a jump box to RDP from to get to that workspace. All right, so now that we have this workspaces IP, what we want to do is we want to head out over to the EC2 console. And then we're going to go under networking to security and we're going to pick security groups. And the reason is we're going to create a security group to attach to that workspace that we know allows RDP to go in. So we're going to create a new security group. We'll call this workspaces RDP inbound. Go to description. Um, the VPC that we're going to deploy this to is the one that that workspace is deployed in. I happen to know that it's my Citrix VPC. And then we're going to add an inbound rule and under type, we're going to scroll down and we're going to select RDP. And then from the source, I'm going to give it the source IP address of my internal subnets so that my jump box um, is able to connect to it. Now keep in mind, this workspace is not on the internet. So the, the box that you're allowing access from um, needs to be either within that VPC or have a route to that VPC. So now that we've created that security group, you can see here that we're allowing uh, inbound over port 3389. So back over on the left here, under network and security, we're going to go to network interfaces. We're going to want to search for that IP address of that workspace. So we're going to copy down to workspaces console. We'll search for that. And this is that network interface that's attached to um, that workspace that you just deployed. So we're going to click on that and under actions. We're going to go change security groups and we're going to search for that inbound RDP um, security group that we just created. And we're going to attach that as well to that workspace. So it has the default security group that workspace is put on there. And then that new one that we know allows RDP inbound and you're going to click save. So at that point now, the security group on that workspace is allowing that inbound connection. I'm going to hop on over to my jump box. And I'm going to, again, paste in that IP address for that machine. And I'm going to click Connect. I'm going to log in as my, uh, my admin account. I'm at RDPN. Now, again, that machine that I'm connecting in from is on the, the same network um, within the same VPC as that machine. It just happens to be another workspace that I have deployed um, through our native workspaces service. 
All right, so I'm going to want to download and install the Citrix VDA at a bare minimum. Okay, so now that the Citrix VDA installer has popped up, um, we're not doing an MCS, um, but we are creating an image to be used um, through through a broker connection. Um, so we'll click the third option. For components, you want to at least install the VDA. You can also install a Citrix workspace app if that's required in your environment. Um, again, the rest of these are really up to um, what you're going to be using in your environment. Um, I'm not going to select any of these for, for this uh, demo. Here, you're going to put in your domain controllers. You can either predefine them now, or you can put them in a group policy and put them on the OU that you're going to be deploying the workspaces to. Um, for simplicity, I'm just going to be putting in my um, existing cloud connectors that we deployed earlier. Again, for features, you'll check off what is needed in, in your environment. Um, there is one here that says to check it off if you're doing it within Azure, AWS, or Google. So I'm going to check that off. Um, I'll leave the rest to automatic. So it sets up the firewall on the machine. Um, and I'm going to click install. At this point, the machine's going to go through the installation. It's going to do a reboot, complete itself. And I'll pick up the video after all of that is completed. And now that the installation of our VDA is complete, we're going to restart the machine. Um, and then we'll come back on and complete uh, the last step of creating our image. All right, so now that our machine is rebooted, I've already peed back in. Um, the last thing you're going to want to do after you've installed your VDA, you've installed your other applications that you're going to want to have on the desktop for your users, um, is you're going to want to run the Amazon Workspaces Image Checker Utility. Um, this should be the last thing you do before you capture the image. And what this is going to do is just do a, a bunch of checks on the machine to make sure that there's nothing on there or nothing is misconfigured that's going to cause an issue with the image creation. Um, so that should already be on the machine. Um, you'll find it under C, Program Files, Amazon Image Checker. Um, so you're going to run that as an administrator. And what this has, again, is a bunch of checks that it's going to run. So we're going to run that test. Um, if it finds anything that's uh, fixable, um, you'll have this fix all warnings box. So you're going to click that. Um, it'll run the scripts to fix whatever failed. Um, and then once you're done there, you can close this down. Um, and we're going to move on over to the Workspaces console. So back over in the Workspaces console, now that we've got the VDA installed, now that we've done the image checker and we're ready to go, um, what we need to do is create an image of this workspace. Um, so when you're on that Workspaces details, you'll see that there's a Create Image button. Um, you need to give the image a name. So we're going to call this um, Citrix Demo Image. Um, you can give a description talking about things like the operating system and what's installed in it. Um, and then you're going to click Create Image. And at this point, it's going to start the image capture process. Um, so if you go over to the image details, you'll see right now that it's in a pending state. Um, so what we need to do um, is wait for this to do the complete capture and become available. Um, and then we can move on to the Citrus console to do the final import um, and complete out today's video. Okay, so our image has completed its capture and you'll now see that it's in an available state. Um, so that's all we need to do over in the Workspaces console. Um, now we're going to head over to the Citrix DAS console to complete the image import. Um, so again, to get to the section that uh, is for Workspaces Core, you're going to go under Quick Deploy, Workspaces Core, uh, and then we're going to go onto the Images tab. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import an image. We're going to choose Next, choose Image. Um, we're going to give this image a name, so we're going to call this one the, our video demo image. We're going to select the account that we've set up. Um, and then what it's going to do is query for all the available images in that account. Um, we're looking for a workspaces image, or, so it's going to start with WSI. Um, you'll also see there's some EC2 images in here as well um, for importing um, BYOL images from EC2. Um, in our case, we're doing a WSI, and there's that Citrix demo image that we created earlier. Um, this is where you're going to pick whether you want it to be single or multi-session. Um, for this example, I'm going to pick multi-session. So we're going to call this one um, server 2022 uh, with VDA. Um, click next. Um, and then we're going to import the image. Um, because this image is already in the Workspaces service, it's going to it's going to complete pretty quick. Um, so if you look here, actually, um, our video demo demo image is now already available. 
Um, and so that's really the last step of this part of the visual guide. Um, in the last video, we'll cover how to create a deployment that stitches together, you know, all the different things that we've put together over the last four videos. All right, and that concludes this visual walkthrough of creating your first Citrix on Workspace's core image. You'll see on the screen here some resources that provide additional information on Amazon Workspace's core, the full administration guide for the solution, and to the AWS EUC community and YouTube playlists. Additionally, in this video's description, you'll find additional links to information on the BYOL image process and just more reading on Amazon Workspace's core. I want to thank you for your time today, and I look forward to bringing you the final step in this deployment process in the next video, where we'll create a deployment that pulls together everything we have built in the past four videos. Take care.